In Factorio, green circuits are needed in great quantities, meaning it consumes a lot of resources, time and energy. Those trade-offs bring dilemmas. Do I prioritize efficiency? Do I prioritize productivity? Or do I prioritize speed and throughput? You might have answers to those questions, but do you know how to get what you want? In today's video, we'll explore six different blueprints you can use in six different situations. Those blueprints will be using level 3 assembling machines and modules. Each of them is designed to feed a blue belt and also a green belt. Let's dive in. Green circuits are one of the most important items in Factorio and they'll be the backbone of almost everything you build later on. To make just one, you need three copper wires and one iron plate. Since each copper plate can be turned into two copper wires, that means every green circuit really costs you about one and a half copper plate plus one iron plate. Now, let's talk about the machines. The very first assembling machine you get is the assembling machine level 1 and it doesn't support modules at all. That makes it pretty weak for late game production. Level 2 assembling machine is better since it allows for two modules, but once you're dealing with huge circuits demands, that's not going to cut it either. So we'll be focusing on level 3 assembling machine. These have 4 module slots, making them perfect for late game blueprints without involving beacons. The base design is actually simple but still very effective. For every 2 green circuits assemblers, you need 3 copper wire assemblers. That ratio ensures your green circuits machines always have enough copper to keep running. Fast inserters and stack inserters are used to fit copper wires and iron plates directly into the green circuits assemblers while a few long-handed inserters take care of moving the finished green circuits out onto the belt. The belts are arranged so that copper plates run on the outside lanes and iron plates on the inside lanes. Technically, one belt of iron would be enough to keep up, but using two makes the design cleaner and more balanced and easier to transition to beacon design if needed. To power it all up, we'll be using substations since they cover a wide area and make wiring everything up quick and tidy. So with that foundation in place, let's dive into the blueprints themselves and see how you can use them in different situations. Let's start with our first blueprint, which is built around efficiency using three green efficiency modules and one red productivity module. Let's start with our first blueprint, which is built around efficiency. This design really shines when your base is under pressure, maybe your power grid is stretched thin, or your pollution cloud has gotten so large that biters are constantly on the attack. In those situations, Cutting down on both power usage and pollution can make the difference between holding the lines or being overrun. With this setup, every assembler runs with efficiency modules, pulling the power draw down to about 113 kW per machine. That's a massive 70% reduction compared to normal. The pollution output is also cut dramatically, down by about two thirds to only 0.66 units. This makes the whole build much quieter on the map giving you breathing room to expand without constantly drawing enemy attention. Unfortunately, nothing comes for free. Because we're mixing in productivity modules, the machines operate a little slower, at roughly 15% below normal speed. However, that productivity bonus means you're also getting 10% more green circuits out of the same amount of copper and iron. In other words, even though production takes longer, your materials are stretched further which adds up over time. And just like the other blueprints we'll cover later, this one also has a variant. It's a version that runs on a faster belt at 60 attempts per second. It doesn't change the ratios or layout, but it helps keep materials flowing smoothly, especially if you're building at larger scales or want to prevent belt saturation. There is one little detail to keep in mind. On the very last assembler, you'll want to place the output inserter on the side instead of directly in front. That ensures the green circles line up neatly on the belt preventing gaps that could otherwise disrupt your flow downstream. So this blueprint is all about resilience. If your factory is in a tough spot, whether that's limited power generation, frequent enemy raids, or just wanting a quieter, cleaner build, this setup and its faster belt variant will keep your circuits flowing steadily. Our second blueprint is also about efficiency. Here, three green efficiency modules are still used, but this time, we switch the productivity module for a speed one, which makes the design more compact. If the first design was about resilience, this one is about pushing efficiency to its absolute limit. With the right module setup, each assembler only draw about 75 kW of power, which is an incredible 80% reduction, the maximum you can achieve. And with that drop in energy use, comes a huge benefit to the environment. Pollution falls to just 0.4 unit per assembler, which is also an 80% cut. That makes this build one of the cleanest way to produce green circuits without constantly provoking attacks. 
The nice part about this blueprint is that it doesn't really come with a big drawback. Instead of taking penalties, you actually gain a small 50% speed bonus, which helps keep the line moving at a decent pace. There's no productivity bonus here, so you won't be squeezing extra circuits out of your raw materials, but at the same time, you're not paying the price of solar machines either. It's what we could call a polyvalent setup, flexible, reliable, and safe. The only trade-off is really an opportunity cost. You could push more speed or productivity with other module combination, but you'd lose this balance of low power and low pollution. Just like the other setups, this design can also be adapted with a variant, for example, running the outputs on a faster belt to handle higher throughput at 60 items per second if you're building on a larger scale. So if you're looking for a blueprint that keeps your factory quiet, minimizes your energy needs, and still keeps production flowing at a healthy speed, this one is the perfect middle ground. Our third blueprint shifts focus completely. Instead of minimizing power or pollution, this one is all about productivity, getting as much output as possible from the resources you feed in. The idea here is simple. The less raw materials you consume per circuit, the more you can stretch your copper and iron supply, which is especially variable in the late game when resources patches are further and further away or harder to defend. To achieve that, we'll be using four red productivity modules on each assembly machine. The trade-off, though, are pretty heavy. Productivity modules are hungry, they cause a 300% increase in power draw, pushing each assembler up to about 1.57 MW, and with that comes a huge spike in pollution, all the way up to around 11.7 units, which is over 5 times more than the basic setup. On top of that, they make machines slower, about 60% slower in fact. That means your throughput drops significantly unless you compensate by building more machines using more space. Another detail with this setup is that copper wire production tends to overshoot. With the extra productivity bonus, your wire assemblers generates far more copper wire than the green circuits assemblers actually need. To deal with this, you can separate the copper wire production into its own section, either storing the extra wire or diverting it to other builds that need it. With this setup, you're producing 40% more green circuits without consuming extra copper or iron, which is a huge gain for resource efficiency, but you need to be ready for sky-high power demand, heavy pollution clouds, and a slower pace. Just like the other blueprints, there's room for a variant, such as pairing this with faster belts to increase the throughput. The main point of this design is clear, if you're rich in power, not worried about pollution, and want to squeeze every last drop of value out of your resources, then this is the blueprint for you. After looking at the productivity setup, let's flip things around with a blueprint that focuses on speed and throughput using four blue speed modules. The real advantage here isn't much that the machines run faster, is that you can achieve the same output with far fewer assemblers. In other words, speed modules let you compress your build into a much smaller footprint, which helps when space is tight. That makes this approach especially useful when you're upgrading an existing setup. Instead of expanding outward and rebuilding everything, you can drop speed modules into your assemblers and immediately push out more circuits, all while keeping the layout compact and efficient. But as always, there are trade-offs. Speed modules ramp up the energy draw dramatically. Each assembler jumps from about 388 kilowatts to 1.42 megawatts. That's a 365% increase and with more energy use comes more pollution. Each machine now produces around 7.6 units of pollution per minute or over three times the original setup. So before you go down this route, make sure your power grid can handle the load and your defenses are ready to deal with the extra biter attention. There are a few mechanical quirks here as well. Long-handed inserters aren't fast enough to keep up with the pace, which means the layout needs to be adjusted to avoid them. Instead, you rely on stack inserters to keep the machine supplied quickly enough once you have that covered, the design runs smoothly, but it does require a bit more care compared to the other setups. At a target rate of 45 green circuits per second, speed module even allow you to free up three copper wire assemblers because their boosted throughput covers the demand on fewer machines. In that version, efficiency modules were slotted into the copper wire assemblers so you can get the speed where it counts while keeping the power draw from spiraling completely out of control. So to sum it up, this setup gives you 200% speed, no productivity bonus, a power consumption pushed up to 1.42 MW per assembler, and the pollution at about 7.6 units. This is the blueprint for when space is your biggest limitation, or when you want to get the most out of an existing line, 
without rebuilding your factory from the ground up. Just remember, it's fast but dirty. Now, let's look at a blueprint that sits right in the middle ground, control speed and productivity. Here, two green efficiency modules, one red productivity module and one blue speed module will be used. The idea here is to get the benefits of both without letting things spiral out of control. With this setup, you get a 35% speed bonus along with a 10% productivity bonus, which means your machines run faster while also giving you extra circuits for the same amount of copper and iron. The best part is that it avoids the massive downsides of the extreme builds. Power consumption does rise, but not dramatically. It goes up to around 563 kilowatts per assembler, which is only about 45% higher than normal. Pollution also increases, but at 3.3 units per minute, is still much more manageable than the heavy production or pure speed focused designs. To make it work though, there are a couple of details to keep in mind. At least one copper wire assembler and one grid circuit assembler need speed modules to keep the throughput balanced. That's because copper wire production runs slightly ahead here and if you remove those modules, the wire input would drop below what's needed to keep the green circuit machines running at full speed. This blueprint is really about finding that sweet spot, faster production, a nice resource saving bonus and higher efficiency than the raw speed or productivity extremes. It does use more power than a no module setup, but it's a cost that many factories can easily handle. And like the other birds we've covered, it has its variants, such as upgrading to faster bats that have a throughput of 60 items per second. So if you want a design that balances growth with stability, giving you speed, productivity, and still keeping power and pollution at reasonable levels, this is the blueprint that strikes that balance. Finally, let's look at the last blueprint in this series. The speed and productivity combination, two blue speed modules and two red productivity modules. This design aims to give you the best of both worlds, you're still saving resources thanks to productivity modules, but at the same time, the line is fast enough to keep up with heavy late game demand. In short, it's about getting more with less, while not sacrificing throughput and space. The trade-off, however, is steep, power consumption skyrockets to about 1.5 MW per assembler, which is a 380% increase and pollution climbs to nearly 9.6 units or over 4 times higher than normal. That means you need a very strong power grid and defenses to support it. This is not a blueprint you drop into a struggling base. There are also small optimizations to keep in mind. At a target of around 45 green circuits per second, the outer copper wire machines can safely use extra productivity modules to stretch resources further. Meanwhile, the middle copper wire machines handles the heaviest throughput, so it benefits from one more productivity module without falling behind. This careful balance between speed and productivity modules ensures that the green circuits assemblers are always supplied at full capacity. In terms of bonuses, you'll get roughly a 70% speed increase and a 20% productivity boost, the downside is that it's one of the most expensive builds in terms of both energy and pollution. Just like the other blueprints, this blueprint also has a variant, which is using a green belt that has a throughput of 60 items per second. So if your goal is to maximize efficiency and speed at the same time, you've got the infrastructure to power it, this blueprint is the ultimate late game option, and that's it, 6 late game green circuits blueprints for 6 different situations, each one has its own trade-offs, so the best choice really depends on what your factory needs most. Efficiency, productivity, space saving speed or just raw output, which one do you think you'll use? Let me know in the comments and if you find this helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching and see you soon.